I'm convinced that there's a certain point in every HR professional's career where you get tired of missing deadlines. At a certain point, we realize we cannot have everything crammed into our heads. We have to realize that we are just people. We have to have a tool to help us to navigate our days day to day. So let's talk about it. Hey, hey, it's Brittany, CEO and founder of Towns Teams Consulting, and I am back with today's video. Today, we're talking about the power of having a written plan when you're working as an HR professional, specifically when you're working as a solo HR practitioner, and let's get into it. If you're new here, I am passionate about helping HR professionals to lead productive and fulfilling careers, and I'm on a mission to help 1,000 solo HR practitioners to see a significant shift in their career over the next 12 months. So with these videos, with the community that we're building, with the tools and the resource that I'm providing, there's no excuse for us to be navigating in the dark when it comes to navigating our careers. And I've been able to see significant shift in my career over the last 15 years, so I'm on a mission to help you do the same. If it sounds like you're in the right place click the subscribe button hit the like button on this video and tune in to more videos just like this writing down a plan might seem a bit elementary but actually it's the most responsible thing you can do we never want to be careless when it comes to leading our careers or navigating our careers because remember there's so many people counting on us from our employees to our team leads to our supervisors to our senior leadership team so again you've got to make sure you're being responsible and making the most of your opportunity to lead your career not only to benefit you but also to benefit the people around you one of the worst parts about working as a solo HR practitioner is that you don't have anyone to back you up. You're also likely working for someone who does not know what you do day to day. So they can't keep you on track. They can't really even hold you accountable very much because they don't know what you do. So they don't know how to hold you to that thing. So when I started my HR career, I worked under the leadership of a senior HR manager. And so if I missed the deadline, she was right there to say, hey, don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do this. Oh, you did that wrong. But remember, when you're working by yourself in HR, you don't have that, that crutch. You don't have that luxury of knowing that someone's going to be able to back you up. You, you have to fail sometimes in order to remember and to realize you've got to fix your systems. You've got to have better processes. So that's what we're talking about today to make sure that we are all on the same page when it comes to navigating our career intentionally starts with making sure we have a solid plan that we're working from. When I became an HR department of one, I was still working as if I had someone to reach out to me for deadlines that I might have missed. And I was sadly mistaken when I realized that I got to keep myself on track. And I was finding myself missing deadlines that I should have remembered. For example, you know performance evaluations and open enrollment preparation and doing things for the 401k plan these are things that happen all the time annually monthly quarterly and yet i was still missing them because i was relying on my own memory that was one of the biggest things that i remember realizing like hey i am a person i am only human i am not a machine and just like you you've got to realize that you have to have things written down not because you can't remember it or not because you won't remember it, or not because you don't want to remember it, but because it's just not, it's not physically possible for you to remember everything you have to do. As an HR department of one, you've got so many directions coming at you at one time. So you've got to make sure you have a plan so that when you get interrupted, so that when you get off track, so that we have to take a time off, you understand how to get back on track because you know where you are in your plan. When I got sick and tired of being sick and tired, I actually created for myself a resource that I continue to build and build and build over my career. And I used that as the basis for what I actually created for this community also. I created the Thriving in HR Planner and we'll talk more about that later on in this video. But the goal I want you to hear from this is there is no easy button. There's no easy way for you to remember everything there is to do. Your plan for your institution is going to be different than my plan. It's going to be different than your peers plan. And that's why I give you a shell of a plan, but you've got to take the initiative to take the full scope of your full year and go through the plan on purpose. We'll talk more about that later, but first let's get into why I believe it's important to make sure you have a plan. If you're not already convinced, these are some things that will help you when you have your plan written down. Having a written plan helps you to have clearer goals. If you don't have anything written down, anything goes. So when you have your goals written down, it makes everything more tangible. You can wrap your mind around it better. It'll make it easier to say no when things come up that don't really align with the goals that you have. So the Bible says, write the vision and make it plain. So when it comes to making your plan, you really want to make sure you are as clear as possible, as specific as possible, because you want to make sure you are able to, to do that thing and you'll know when you achieve it. 
Having a plan also helps you to have better prioritization. So again, like I said in the prior point, it makes it easier to say no, or it makes it easier to say not yet, or it makes it easier to say maybe later if you have goals written down and you know what's gonna be the most important thing at that time. For example, if you're in the middle of working on a time-sensitive project and you get interrupted by something else that might be a nice to do, you're not gonna interrupt your time-sensitive project because of someone else's requests or someone else's emergency because they didn't plan on their part. No, when you have your goals written down, when you have your plan written down, it makes it easier to either say yes to other people and, and be able to accommodate their requests or it gets you a reason to say, listen, I'm actually working on this. I've got to get this done by tomorrow. Can I get back in contact with you in two days or three days or next week? The next reason why having a written plan is really, really important and you don't want to mess it up is because you want to make sure you are able to have accountability. So remember when I said before, as a solo HR practitioner, your supervisor likely does not know what you do day to day. They can't tell you what to do day to day. So you have to have a plan a tool, a resource to help keep yourself accountable. Why? I'm a strong believer in the fact that even if you don't lead anybody right now, you should be working as if you are leading someone. That someone you should be leading is yourself. Before you can lead anybody else, you gotta lead yourself first. So if you can't keep yourself on track, if you can't hold yourself accountable, if you can't find ways to reward yourself, how can you do that for other people? You might be solo today, but you could have a team member in three years, in four years, in six months. So again, you've got to have your systems in place and you've got to have your tools in place. You have to hold yourself accountable in the process so that when you do have people added to your team or when you have things that are coming up, you have to make sure you are able to stay on track regardless of what happens. And then having a written plan helps you to reduce your stress. So a lot of times when we find ourselves stressed because we have so many things happening in our minds and we have so many things that are coming at us and you just get paralyzation because of all the things that are coming at you. And so having a plan written down helps you to re reduce your stress because you are able to say, okay, well, this is what's happening. This is what I'm gonna have to deal with. There's 24 hours in a day. There's eight hours in a work day. I've got 10 days to get this project done. It is what it is. So you just dig in and you get it done. Having a plan in place helps you to make easier decisions when it comes to saying yes, when it comes to saying no. So again, your plan can keep you on track and help you to reduce your stress in the process. We talked about my time as an unpaid intern. We've also talked about my time as an HR department of one where I worked for about six years. Today in that same organization, I lead three departments. So I lead HR, I lead training and learning, and I also lead compliance. And there's no way I could do those things without having a solid plan in place. Not only a plan for myself, but a plan for my team. My team was outside of myself. Having a written plan benefits not only you, but it benefits your career because it helps you to make sure you are able to identify the things that are most important to get those things done and keep the needle moving forward with time after time after time. So you might be asking, Brittany, where do I start? I want to get more intentional with making my plans. How do I need to start my weeks? What do I need to do to start my quarters, my months, my years? If you're just starting out, I think a great place to start is to plan your week. So at the beginning of your work week, whatever that day is, at the beginning of your work week, write down the things that you know you got to get done or the things you like to get done. And your first times doing it is probably going to be a little bit more difficult. You're probably going to have a list of like 10 to 30 things and all those things may not be able to get done. You should really have maybe two or three things every day that you want to achieve. And I know that's difficult to say, but I mean, when you're talking about project-based things, maybe two to three things. Um, but when it comes to starting small, start with your week. So what are your must-haves to get done that week and start from there? From those things, so let's call those those big bucket things, break those big bucket things down into more actionable steps. For example, one of your big bucket things might be to um, post a new position. So you know posting a new position has a lot of different steps. You'll have to, you know, consult with the hiring team. You have to look at the job description. You'll have to write the job posting. You have to post it on the website or post it on your career site or then start screening applicants and come up with any screener questions. There's a lot of actionable steps under these big bucket items, but write these things down initially so that you can start to see, okay, well, how long will this take? Once you've got your two to three big bucket items and you've been able to break those down in smaller actionable steps, then start to prioritize. Okay, so what is most important right now? What, what needs to happen right now? What needs to happen eventually? What's waiting on something else to happen? Again, when you're working as the HR department of one, you're dealing with a lot of different people, even though they're not on your team, you're helping them to to coordinate their day. So whether it's, you know, you, you're waiting for the schedule of the hiring managers to make sure that we can all have the same time to, to meet these new hire candidates, or you're waiting on, you know, the new hires to actually fill out their benefits and Roman paperwork so that you can put it into the system. So you're waiting on certain things to happen at certain times. So again, you want to prioritize what can you do now 
And what are you waiting on someone else to do? So you prioritize those steps as well. As you're doing all these things and you know how much time is going to take you to get these things done, make space for these things in your calendar. I am all about scheduling these things out and making space in your calendar, even if it's things like screening candidates. If you know it's gonna take you maybe two hours a day or one hour a day or whatever it is for you to screen candidates, block that time out. Yes, the time is flexible. Yes, it could be moved to the side in the case of an emergency, but you wanna keep your time accountable because if you if you put everything on your list, and you know you can't get it all done, when you walk away at the end of the day, you're gonna feel like you didn't do anything. So, but if you know you've got a lot of things to do and almost everything on that list takes four hours each, you can't get it all done in one work day. So it helps you to really break down what's manageable, what's realistic, what's attainable in your work week. And you just need to plan that time out so that if you get interrupted, you can always get back on track. And then finally, I would make sure that you are reviewing your plan daily. So at the beginning of every day, you should see, okay, well, what did I not get done the day before? But at the end of every day, again, you should be making the plan for the next day. The reason for that is because you never want to just feel like you're just working, working, working with no end in sight. There should always be a place in your day where you're reviewing what you did and also you're preparing for the next thing. This will also allow you to make adjustments as needed. If you're serious about getting more intentional with your plan and you want a tool to help you get through your entire year and not just one week, I highly recommend you get my Thriving in HR Planner. You can either purchase the digital download if you have like a remarkable tablet or some like other writing device, you can download that off of my website or you can get a printed version, a printed soft cover book on Amazon. Whatever you choose, you can't go wrong, but you have to commit to doing the work because it's gonna take you a good solid year to get through the whole year to make sure that you're not only just handling what's right in front of you, but the goal is to prepare for what's gonna come next. If my career has taught me nothing else, it has taught me patience, patience above everything else because you've gotta be patient. Everything is a long game. I can't only focus on what's happening today. I've gotta focus on what's happening next year, next month, next seven months. You're going to find yourself thinking more ahead as you go throughout this planner, as you go throughout this process of thinking more intentionally, but you're going to find yourself being much more prepared because you already thought about what those weeks and months will require. Click the link in the description down below to learn more about the Thriving in HR Planner. If you want to book some time with me to talk about it, we can do that as well. If you've got any questions for me, if I can serve you at a higher level, never hesitate to reach out to me. I'll talk to you in the very next video. Bye.